and I will turn the time over to Brittany. Okay, hi everybody. I'm so stoked to see everybody here. It's so nice to have so many fun faces. Well, a couple faces. I don't think everyone has their camera on, which is fine. You don't have to. Um, but I'm so glad to teach you how to make these honeycomb stacked ornaments. Um, these are uh, inspired by um, some Bauhaus. I don't know if you know the art movement Bauhaus or the art school from the 20s and 30s. I took a class on it in graduate school and it was so inspiring to me. Um, so they were all about like new modern shapes and um, unique color palettes. And that's exactly what these are. So they're a little spin off of something I did earlier. Um, so there'll be a few shapes with, um, with some like traditional honeycomb shape, but we made some new ones and a new color palette. So um, before we get into it though, I wanna say hello, my name is Brittany Jepson of the house that Lars built. And I have been running the house that Lars built for about 13 years. And it started out as something else and it's grown into DIY and crafts because I believe that everybody should be making at least something with their hands. And when you make something with your hands, you lead a better well-being. It just helps you. And so I, I think there's a project and a time frame for everybody. I know time is short, so I really value being here. And I believe that if we try and do this more often, we'll just be a little better off. So this is a Cricut project. You could also use any craft machine. We have the SVG files for you. Um, oh, that's good. Yeah, everyone come in and say where you're from. I love seeing where you're from. Hi all from Georgia. That's fun. So everyone tell me where you're from. I am here in Utah, Provo, Utah. And in my home office, we have the studio downstairs, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Northern Virginia. I lived in DC for a long time, Wendy. I love that part of the world. Hi from Chicago. This is honestly the best part of the whole class is just seeing where everyone's from because it's incredible that we can come together um, for crafting. So Pittsburgh, San Diego. I'm from Orange County. Hello. Hi from Clarence, New York. Niagara Falls. This is so cool. Uh, perfect weather in DC Metro. Ugh. Of course it is. Fall in the in DC is the most magical time. Um, Cherry Hill. Okay, this is so, Midway, Georgia. Cherry Hill, New Jersey. New York. Okay, everyone, if you just join in, please tell me where you're from. I still want to. I'll keep it on as I as we start. Okay, like I said, we're going to start with our Cricut machine, and actually, I'm going to turn it to uh, so I can see it better. Okay, so we're going to start. Actually, we're going to start with our ornament. So with the, Michaels has this cool, um, these cool, they're not glass, they're like a plastic, they look like glass and they're much better if you have kids, surprise. <laughs> or if you have animals, you know, and they're trying to get at the Christmas tree and they knock it off and you don't want it shattered. So they have these great plastic ones. And so we developed this new technique for them where we're gonna, we're gonna paint them, but the technique is kind of cool because can take off the tops and then inside you have um, like an empty can or canister. So we're gonna take some paint and it's right in front of me. And you're gonna take a little drop of water and you're gonna use quite a bit of paint. But first you put in a little drop of water and I don't have an eyedropper. And it's not crucial, but hopefully I won't get my whole dress wet and look like I peed my pants. It's a little baby. We just want a little baby in there. Ooh, come on. Oh, you know what? I'm really, okay. <laughs> so you just want a little bit of water in there. And that's actually, if you can see that too much. So I'm going to just get rid of a little bit on my dress. And it'll look like my three-year-old toddler who's learning how to TMI, I know, I'm so sorry. Okay, a little bit, just a little bit. And then you take some paint and you put it in there, you just drop it in. You're gonna want a good amount of paint in there. Maybe like a quarter of a bottle. And again, everything is from Michaels. And so these are these acrylic 
paints are pretty, pretty inexpensive. So I'll do that much. You can always put more in. And then I'm going to cover it with this and I'm going to shake it around. Shake, shake, shake. Shake dance party. Shake your ornament. <laughs> shake your ornament. All right. I don't know if you have to have licensing for that, but I just changed the word. So hopefully that's okay. All right. Oh, let me bring out my chat. I want to see where more people are from while I shake it. What Cricut are you using today? I'm using my maker machine. It doesn't have to be a maker. It can be an explorer. Um, um, so it doesn't have to be maker. It, we're just cutting paper today. Uh, oh yeah, thank you, Maddie. Um, Detroit, Michigan. I don't know if there's been other questions, but um, if there are other questions, feel free to let me know. Okay, I'm trying to get all the sides. You wanna like drip it around, covering all the plastic parts. And it's such a cool way to do this because you can, you can either paint the outside. If you like it to look more painterly, you could paint the outside. It'll just look like brush strokes, which is fine because we like it to look handmade. But this is a good technique if you wanna customize your ornaments to your color palette, just use paint and clear ornaments. Now I'm gonna set it aside. You can see all the paint coming out. It's gonna drip to the side, which is fine. And then I'm gonna leave it. The magic of television is that I already did one. Okay, hold on, it's coming out. Is it gonna stand on its own? There we go. I already did one. So it's nice and beautiful. And what we're gonna do is we're going to drill. I just have a small little eighth drill in here. And if you're afraid of, is this is there a way to do this without an electronic cutter? Melody, yes, there is a way to do it. You're just gonna have to cut it, cut it with scissors. And it's 50 pieces. So just put on a movie and get to cutting. <laughs> But I like to craft and watch movies anyway, so maybe it's a nice mindless thing to do at the end of the day. So I'm going to drill inside at the very bottom, directly underneath the ornament. And take precautions. Be, be gentle with yourself. I think it might need a little bit of hand holding, huh? Yep. Okay, still going. Woohoo! Did it. Nailed it. Okay, so put in a hole. If you're afraid, I, I'm worried about what my face looks like during that. <laughs> And you know when you're concentrating. Um, okay, so you put the hole in the bottom and you set it aside. That's again, this is after it's dried. You don't want to drill it when the paint's still coming out. So next we're gonna go to our Cricut. And what I did for this one, and I'm gonna show you some pieces I already cut out, but we're making this a bit different than um, the ones I've done in the past. We're doing a honeycomb is when it, um, it has a bunch of papers that create this honeycomb effect and it creates a 3D quality. You can also take off the top and drill down. That's true. You can do that too. Um, so you would just need a longer, longer piece, longer bit. Um, so I have two different colors here of the same shape and I am going to um, show you how to do this on your Cricut machine. So let me go to design space and you can, um, there's a couple ways to do this. I believe that Michaels has provided the SVG to you. So if you don't have a Cricut machine, you can also do it on your um, silhouette or whatever. And I have the link to the design space um, and I'm going to make it. And you can see that I've, I will be cutting out one color. I'm gonna cut out this like more um, burgundy color. And Brittany, if you want to share your computer screen. Oh, okay. We'll be able to oh, see the course. design. Oh, sorry. Um, share screen. Share screen. Okay, can you see it now? 
Yes, looks good. Okay, great. Now, let's see if I'm getting confused between, okay. So now I'm gonna, okay, I think I should show you. Okay, so with the link that goes straight to Design Space, it brings you straight to this page. And then I have everything set up. So I'm gonna press continue. And if you're new to Cricut, this is a pretty simple one to do. So I'm gonna take off my plastic and I'm gonna put my piece of paper on the, um, on the mat. Okay, I'm gonna get it back again because you were probably not seeing that. Is that right? Everyone should be able to see your shared screen and your spotlit camera at the same time. I love it. Okay, great. So I'm gonna get that ready. I'm gonna do medium cardstock. I always do a medium cardstock because um, it's just certain to cut it all the way through. Yeah, we're gonna do that. And then we just need our fine point blade. And then now it's instructing me to put my mat in. And then it's instructing me to press go. So I'm gonna go. Oh, you can see preparing. It's a little loud, so I don't know if I can chat, but we'll see. Okay, now it's quickly cutting out these shapes. Oh, I don't think I put it on <laughs> very, very well. I'm gonna pause it. Pause. Sorry guys, I did not put that on tight enough. I think I might even need to, um, do I need to redo it? Let's redo it. It cut it out fine enough, but I think, okay, oh, that's right. Sorry guys, that was a, in real time mishap. I needed to take my scraper and put it really heavy onto the mat. This will keep it really secure so you will avoid um, the paper lifting off from the sticky mat. And if you have a mat that doesn't have a lot of stick, you can tape it down so it stays really secure. So I'm gonna go back. Um, Okay, go. It's working now. It looks good. Okay, I don't know if you can see how nice this looks from up above, but it looks good. This is the satisfying part, you know, where you're like, I just let the machine do all that. Are there any questions that I'm missing? I haven't seen any questions come through. I am putting three links in the chat. There's one with a direct link to Design Space for that file, and then there's another with an SVG download, and then also a PDF download. And responding to Melody's question about, um, I don't know how to use an SVG. If you have Cricut, then um, there is a place on Cricut, it says to upload your design. You can upload the SVG there and, um, and then it'll instruct you on what to do. So hopefully that will um, be helpful. For non cricket peeps, are those shapes all the same size? Yes, they're all the same size. Yeah, just use the PDF and cut it out by hand. Um, again, they're pretty, they're pretty simple size. If you use a, a craft machine, it gets it exact. But I have done hand, cut things by hand, and it's fine. So. Hopefully that's not too much of a hindrance, but machines are fun for that reason. Um, where else is everybody from? I see there's about, let's see, I just had it. Six, there's 60 something people on here. 
Detroit, East Texas, Canton, Michigan, Denver, Colorado. Okay, we're done. And I'm just gonna do one page today. So that's about, use about 50 pieces total to make a full honeycomb. If you did a hundred, it would just be like even more full. Um, I did 25 of each color in advance. Um, so now we're gonna take it out. Brittany, are you done with your screen share? Oh yeah, we can do that. Um, stop share. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna take it out and we're all done with our Cricut machine for right now. And this is satisfying. Just remove it. Look at that. Oh, like some, they look like cute little mountains. Now we can take them off. I'm gonna take them off by hand so that um, you can use a scraper, which helps lift it up a little bit. But I don't think it's terribly crucial if you don't have all the gadgets and gizmos aplenty. Who's it's and what's it floors. Thing in the box. I got a lot. Okay, keep on going. Okay, for the sake of this tutorial, I'm not going to do a full one because that will take probably a little too much time. So I'm going to set aside my scraper and I have my glue gun on. Alabama, but watching in Phoenix. Ooh, Pocono Mountains, Pennsylvania. I have manual die cutting machine, so I may have another shape. Yeah, you could totally substitute in Melody. The Cricut link says the project cannot be made or customized. That's odd. I don't know. Are other people able to make it? I'd be curious how the hell that's going. Okay, so I've got all my shapes and I've got my other shapes too. So what I'm gonna do is, I am going to now glue my pieces together. You can see how eventually when you glue a bunch of them together, it gets really thick. And here's the trick to honeycomb. You are going to glue in two different lines. So because I'm gluing on a light piece first, I'm going to glue down the middle. I like to use a glue gun for pretty much everything, but you can use like Elmer's glue for this too, or like a tacky glue. And you're going to hold it down. And then for this next one, I'm going to do one on the two lines on either side of that middle line, if that makes sense. And you want to glue it so it's as exact as possible to the previous one. Hold it down. And then for the light one again, you want to do one down the middle again. Okay. And then with your dark, you want to do on the sides again. So every other paper will be either in the middle or on the sides. And that will create the fan effect. And again, this is a great TV project or podcast project. It's something where it's repetitive, which makes it kind of mindless where you can really dig into it and it's a good relaxation one. Personally, I'm just like a big documentary person. I just watched Lula Rich. Yikes, that was a big gulp. 
That was a hard to swallow movie, a documentary. What, what's everyone watching right now? What was it called in Cricut Design? I'm late, I'm sorry. Um, there's a link to the Cricut Design um, file above, I believe. How do you know if you have medium weight cardstock? Personally, I just call everything medium weight. It just makes it so it cuts deeper. Instead of, if you go very little weight on it, then there's a chance it may not cut all the way through. Um, for example, here, this um, more burgundy paper is from the scrap box um, paper aisle at Michael's. It's lighter, it has like a linen texture on it. This brighter one is a heavier cardstock. I just call them both medium weight to make sure that it cuts all the way through. So now I'm gonna keep on going down the middle. And then to the sides. Has anyone ever made like homemade honeycomb shapes before? You can get those honeycomb balls at party stores. They typically come in like circles or diamonds. Um, they can be pretty expensive, which is why um, I think it's really fun to make your own handmade one because you can do any shape you want and it looks so luxurious, kind of fancy looking. Yeah, Maddie just provided the link. Okay. Okay, so I just added on 10 more and I could keep going, but that right there is about 50 of them. And now what I'm gonna do is you have, it looks like your book binding, if anyone's ever book binded before. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add glue gun to the edge of your binding. You can get some clamps if you want. I'm just gonna clamp it down with my hands. So you're going to like add glue to this. You want it to be tight. Ooh. I like to use low temperature glue guns for my work. I don't like to get burned. And high, there are few things where you truly need a high temperature glue gun. This one is about, I wanna say like $4 for Michaels. I use it for everything. Okay, here's my trick. I'm putting my fingers in my mouth because I'm gonna put my finger directly onto the glue. Mat it down. Your, your mouth is cooler than the glue gun. So it'll help you. I'm also eating glue gun as I go, so I don't recommend that. Um, okay, just keep on going. Make sure it's like, it's gonna feel like, um, you know, the edge of like a, a legal pad of paper, add a, a gum source. We're making our own, it's a much cheaper version with glue sticks. Okay, and then once again, tighten it. Tighten it together. Can you see that? All right, it's looking pretty gluey. I'm gonna keep it. Looks so gross. This is not a COVID friendly one. So don't share it with other people. <laughs> don't lick your finger and give it to someone else. That's my tip for the day. Okay. I'm going to let it dry for a little bit because as soon as we, we're going to bring it around, but we don't want to ruin the adhesion that we already have. So I see a little part. And I'm gonna put in another glue stick. I have a lot right here. Always have, always come prepared with extra glue sticks. You see that? Okay, it looks really funny, right? But you won't even see that. Okay, 
It's looking pretty dry. I'm gonna keep going. <laughs> no, it's still wet a little bit. Okay, in the meantime, I'm gonna ask for your advice. I am going to use a colored thread, some embroidery floss to string the pieces together between my ornament and my honeycomb and my beads and my discs. Which color would you go with? If you, I will go with the one that people think will look best. Here's my palette. Let me know what you think. Okay, and in the meantime, they, there are some beads that you can get from Michaels with um, holes in them so you don't have to drill them yourself and some discs. We did have to um, drill the discs in because we couldn't find any with holes already. So, and then we painted them in advance, various beads. The idea is to fill your tree with various shapes. So try some with like, um, just have fun adding variation to it. Okay, so now let's see, burgundy, plummy lavender. I have a for real, so I always go for pink or purple. Um, dark green lavender. Ooh, this might be asking for trouble because I'm not sure we'll get the same answer. Dark green, lavender, burgundy. They're all different. Love your nail polish. Thank you. <laughs> um, Haley on our team, she does nails on the side and she did like some really, oh, look at that, third chip, so don't look too closely. She does nails and the coolest designs, they're based off of our, we have some, a phone case collection with Case Defy and she did a really good job. Yellow. Okay, you guys literally chose every color. <laughs> so I'm just going to go with Jane. What's the final verdict? Green. green. This one? This one? This one? This one? Okay, we're going to go with dark green. Okay, so I'm going to take like 20 inches. I'm going to get these out of the way. And then I have a tapestry needle. Could you use flat buttons? Oh, that is a cute idea. Angela, could you use flat buttons in place of the wood discs? I think that is the cutest idea. And yes, you can do that. Very cute idea. And that way it already has holes and it adds a, another handmade quality. Okay, so I'm gonna thread my needle and I'm going to um, I just realized that I use my tongue a lot to grab onto things. Does anybody else do that? I don't know. Do, do you do that? Something? Okay. Pretty sure my grandmother taught me about that. I'm not sure anymore. Okay. So I put a knot at the bottom of my string. If you don't know how to knot, what I do is I, again, put my fingers in my mouth and then I twist it around my finger and I twist that and then I pull on it. it, creates like a nice knot. So I'm gonna do that at, and I'm gonna put a small little, um, put it through one of my small beads. And then I'm going to put some glue into, inside. And I'm gonna pull my knot through this. That way, I'll add a little bit of glue at the end to secure it. And then I like to get rid of the, the spider glue, glue, um, what are these called? You know what I'm talking about, the, the remnants from the glue gun. I like to get, what's it called? Webs. Yeah, the spider webs <laughs> at the end. Okay, so now I have I'm not going to tug on it quite yet, but now I'm going to um, maybe add on a disc. I use like a tomato red, coral pink, chartreuse color palette because that's my favorite palette for Christmas. Hair dryer or heat gun will get rid of the glue strands, Melody. Genius. Okay, Melody changing lives right now. Okay. So now I'm going to take my honeycomb and I'm going to wrap it around. 
And I'm going to add blue to this side to, so that when you wrap it around that, they fold together, if that makes sense. Bring it all the way around. Oh, oh maybe I should have exercised you a little bit more. It's like me, wildly out of shape. Oh, yeah, I did need to, he needed to stretch beforehand. I didn't give him that time. Give your honeycomb some time to stretch. And what's cool about this, it, it creates like a, um, like a cylinder in the middle. Do you see that hole? So you can put your tapestry needle all the way down. Okay, let me give it a little bit more stretch. Okay, love, love that tip. Okay, I am like totally pulling it maybe a little too much. Okay, oh, I have it out of the frame. So sorry about that, guys. So I'm gonna hold it together. And I think I probably needed to do more paper, which is why it's stretching so much. So make sure you give yourself the full 50 pieces. And if any come apart, you can glue them back together. Okay. You see how it's taking shape? Well, nope, it's not taking shape. <laughs> it's coming apart. Okay, let's put that back together. Just redoing my lines. I think I tried to save some time by not having to do it all and now it's stretching too much. So don't take shortcuts in life. Hmm? That's the motto. Okay, this one needs the... Oh dear, let's do this. We're just getting a little finessing. There's always a finessing involved. Turn the fan apart, but doing so when the glue is softer allows the glue to stretch. Yeah. I stretch. Oh, okay. Sorry, Deidre. I missed her. There's, yeah, there's a slight gluing involved to this where you're stretching the glue and you're stretching the fan together, really. And because I, it would be helpful if there were a lot more to them, if that makes sense. If there's more paper, then there's less stretching that needs to be done. Okay, but you can see it taking shape now. Do you see that? Okay. And if I had my glue gun or my hair dryer, like Melody said, I would take away those spider webs. Okay. It's looking good, you guys. Oh, look at that. Okay, what I love about these is that they are so simple, the shapes, but then when you put it all together, it creates like this rounded 3D quality. And we gave it the three-dimensional coloring with the burgundy and the lighter coral. Okay, so now I have my beads and I'm gonna go straight through There's a big enough hole in my honeycomb that I can just go straight through with my needle.
And then I'm going to top it off with another disc and another, let's see what I'm going to do, a small bead and then a big bead. Oh, this is cute, you guys. Okay, now I'm going to finish it off with my ornament. So go through the bottom and thankfully this needle is big enough. Yeah, let's go to that, thank you. Okay, can you see it? It's so fun. Actually, maybe let's take, I'm gonna take off. What am I gonna take off? I'm going to take off, I'll just leave it for right now. That's kind of fun. So you could use these as ornaments on your tree or you can do it just like as a fun decoration outside, like an entryway, um, up to you. This one is like so long that I think it could be cool just like as its own decoration piece. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is securing it. So I'm gonna secure it to the side of the ornament. This will make it really sturdy. So I'm gonna glue it inside like that to the side of the opening. And instead I'm gonna take my I'm gonna take my needle and then attach it. And then what you can do is put the top on. See that? Put it in side. Oh, you know what, actually, put it back on. I meant to bring the thread through the hole. There's a little hole in the aluminum or the tin um, topping. So I need to put that back on. Thanks, Angela. What a beautiful ornament. They're so fun. And the fun thing is that you can make them all different. I think this would also be a fun group crafting one if you like to get friends together. And it's honestly cheaper if you buy materials for everybody. Just buy them in bulk. Michael's has like a great um, program where you can buy them in bulk. So it's a good good money saver there and we use that all the time. Okay, so I just brought my thread through the top and now I'm going to tie, make a little tie, just knot it at the top to the side. This is where it's gonna get secured, won't go anywhere. And I'm gonna double knot it. I'm going to cut it off, cut off the remnants. So we have this, maybe you can go back to um, the other view. And I got some, some beautiful coral ribbon, such a perfect color for our project. And I'm going to add in a ribbon at the top, which a ribbon and a bow is always the icing for me. So let's take that off. And we'll add in a lovely bow right through the top. It's going to be quite lengthy. And left over right, right over left to create a lovely, perfect square, square knot ribbon. And you can either leave it long, but I'm going to cut it to maybe like right here, maybe like a third of the way down. Yeah. I will make this for Mardi Gras. Oh, I like that. That's fun. Lenka. Is that how you say it? Nice class. Well explained. Oh, great. These are absolutely so inspired. You guys. It's, um, I'm in the spirit to start Christmas crafting. That's the goal. Okay, here's my philosophy about Christmas crafting. 
I know people are like, oh, don't get into the commercialism of Christmas. But you know what? Sometimes you just got to start things early, right? Because if I have two little kids, if I don't start now, I'm not starting in December when my head is going insane, right? I'm starting now. I think this is starting my nativity set now. We're doing a nativity craft along um, on our channels at House Lars Built because you need to give yourself some time, right? So we're painting a figure a month. And in this way, you could do like an ornament or week or, you know, space it out. If you like to do it at night, I'd love to know when you like to craft. Do you like to do it at night or during the day? These are getting lovely at it. using the hot glue. Oh, good. Um, so this is, this is the final piece. Um, and again, you can have fun with varying the colors, um, however you want to do it. And I want to show you, um, so this, <laughs> I put so much paint into this, it's all coming out. You could even reuse it if you put it into like a reusable, um, a reusable little tray. So this is my wet ornament that's still coming out. And my little boy is um, homesick today. So you might hear him. he's walking by right now. Can you show the accordion, accordion folding technique again? Um, by that, do you mean the um, gluing process? I have a few pieces left so I can show how to do the gluing process again. The fan fold. Okay, yeah, you take that. <laughs> okay, so I don't have another one set up to show you how to wrap it around. Um, happy hollow Christmas wing, two seasons of crafting at once, totally. Um, I love Christmas, I love Halloween, so I don't mind merging together. Maybe the perfect movie to watch while you craft this is The Nightmare Before Christmas, which is such a good movie. So clever, I love the songs. Okay, so I'm gonna show you the, um, the gluing technique again, which is two lines on the outside and then one in the middle, right in the middle. Hopefully this is what you were asking. Again, I can't show you, unless you wanna see it here, how once you have the book, you wrap it around and glue it together like that. If you, <laughs> using my hands as an example. Um, and then again, to the sides. That makes sense. Hopefully that's helpful. Yes, thank you. Okay, good. So it really looks more complicated than it is. It's quite simple. You just remember every other you glue differently and then you wrap it around with that binding technique at the end with the glue gun. So um, are there any other questions? I'd love to, love to answer them. And maybe I'll show you once again how it dangles with delight. Look at this. Such a fun, such a fun look. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna show the, there we go. And then it goes back. <laughs> I know you know how things twist, but this is so fun. And I had a great time crafting with you. So thank you so much. And you can find um, find me on the house at larsbuilt.com and on Instagram at House Lars Built on Pinterest. We love Pinterest. We use it every day. House Lars Built there. Uh, where else are we? Facebook, House Lars Built. We share, we have lots of Halloween things we're working on right now. We are doing Christmas things because we need time. Um, thank you, everybody. Is there, if there are no more questions? Oh, thank you. Good to see you. Um, it's fun to have friends here and new friends. So come join us over there. We share lots of tutorials. We show tips. We have a really fun, okay, back to the craft along. We just, we're doing a craft along um, and we're having guest crafters come and join us every week. The next one is tomorrow with Sabrina Soto from HGTV. And last week it was with Amanda Seyfried. Um, and she was so kind enough to join me in painting a nativity scene. So it was so fun. Oh, question. What's that? Oh, yeah. And you can also um, get our ebook to know how to do it. I'll show a little scene. Show us how to do it. So fun. 
Um, I just ordered all the supplies for the craft along yesterday. Yay! Um, I noticed you hot glued the back. Have you tried using other materials to glue the back together? I haven't. Um, you certainly can. You can use tacky glue, book binding glue. Um, this honestly, if if they're not strained, if you have enough pieces of paper, it should be, it should not be a problem. I've done like, we've done like quite a few of them, 40 of them. Um, they're a, a part of a very special Michaels project, so look out for that. Can you create your own cutting design shapes? Certainly, um, you can do that. You can make, um, let me get my piece of paper here. Is there a pen? Let's see, let's get one. I think it's on my desk, one second. So if you have, um, You can make your own shapes. Remember, everything will be symmetrical. So you can make like, oh, great. So you can make like a triangle. The, the inner line has to be flat. You can make a simple triangle, but then you can have fun with it and you can, you know, make your own shapes like this. Um, or a simple circle, half circle. I also have a book called Craft the Rainbow and I show you how to make a rainbow version of like a simple um, half circle design out of tissue paper. It's kind of, it's pretty cool. <laughs> we have like every single shade of the rainbow in there. Um, but yeah, if you like to draw and you know how to turn these into an SVG file, you can, or you just wanna hand cut them, um, you can certainly do your own. Just remember, you won't see detail very well. So you could do like, um, I don't know, like a vase shape or um, you could even make this empty if you want, which we are on design space. We have some designs where it's empty in the middle. So it kind of, it, um, it it's a fun little detail. You could use a symmetrical design and just fold it in the middle. Yeah, you can make a heart shape and just cut it in half. I do that all the time, hand draw, scan, then convert the line, find the file online to a free great tip. Oh, great. Um, like lace, yeah, Linka, like lace, exactly. So you could even add like, like a snowflake even, right? So you could add unique shapes in here. You just won't see those very well. So you may not want to do too, um, too many fine details on the cutouts, but here you could go to town um, you could even do like, I don't know, like a face. Oh, let's see if we could do like a profile. That could be kind of fun. <laughs> Actually, now that I say that, I kind of want to make people. <gasps> what if you did brainstorm session? What if you did like your family portraits? And then you could, oh, hold on. Okay, for reals. You could add like a little beret and a pom-pom at the top. That is so cute. Okay, <laughs> everyone's leaving. I'm getting really into this brainstorm session. Um, bye, Priya. <laughs> um, thank you so much for joining me. This is, I listen, I ended up with a with an idea that I'm very stoked about here. So thank you for your, your ideas. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Feel free to DM me or email me um, or, you know, however you want to get in touch. There's a lot of ways nowadays. All right, thank you so much, Brittany. Thank you everyone for coming. Great, thanks. Hope to see you soon.